We got some movie release news for you. Uh, new new releases coming out this year. On April 21st, the new film by Ari Aster, who directed Hereditary and Midsummer, Bo is Afraid, will open in theaters. The film features Joaquin Phoenix as a mild-mannered, anxiety-ridden man who, after the sudden death of his mother, is forced to confront his darkest fears as he embarks on an epic Kafka-esque journey. Very strong ensemble in the supporting cast. We've got Amy Ryan, Parker Posey, Nathan Lane, and Richard Kind. Uh, This comes to us from A24, which has become a studio from other critically acclaimed movies like Good Time, The Florida Project, and Uncut Gems. Now, I saw the trailer for this one, and it looks absolutely bonkers. Uh, It's very surreal, highly stylized. I don't know what something like this will do at the box office, but strong cast, strong director, he's made some quality films, should be interesting to say the least. Also opening on April 21st, Guy Ritchie's The Covenant stars Jake Gyllenhaal as a U.S. Army sergeant and Dar Salim as an Afghan interpreter who saves his life. When the sergeant finds out that his interpreter and his family were not given safe passage back to America as promised, he returns to Afghanistan to retrieve the interpreter and bring him and his family to the States before the Taliban hunts them down. Now, this doesn't look like your typical Guy Ritchie movie. It's a straight war drama. We don't get a lot of the eccentric characters and wild camera movie that's sort of his signature. There have been quite a few films about the Afghan and and Iraq wars, but very few of them have actually done well. So it'll be interesting to see what this one does critically and at the box office. Moving on, on May 5th, it's the second Marvel installment this year after the Ant-Man movie. So we got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. From the trailer, there looks to be a lot going on in this one. Uh, Lots of high drama, but also laced with the quips and jokes from uh, writer-director James Gunn. It looks like Gamora has returned. So she died in Infinity War, and we got a new version of her in in Endgame. So this is going to be the version of her from that film, which is kind of her taken out of time. So not the same Gamora that Peter Quill fell in love with. The big bad looks to be this character called the High Evolutionary, and he may or may not be, from what I gather, this is all me interpreting the trailer, he might be the guy who created Rocket Raccoon. So that'll be interesting to see. We also get Adam Warlock in this movie, who's a bit of, I think he's a sort of a comic book deep cut. I don't know if there's a lot of Adam Warlock fans out there, but I thought the previous two Guardian films were really strong. I think they're a couple of the best in the MCU. James Gunn really has a vision and a voice for this material. And the performances from Chris Pratt and company, always really solid. This one promises to end their saga, but with a bang and I think a proper send off to the characters. Now, James Gunn is off now. He's This is, I think, his last Marvel film. He's going to be working with DC, uh, Warner Brothers slash Discovery, and it's going to be interesting to see what he does in that universe. He recently announced an entire slate of films and series, but uh, we DC fans have been promised a lot in the past. So we'll see what he and his partner, Peter Safran, can deliver. It was also recently announced that Gunn would be writing and directing Superman Legacy, which is a new Superman movie. Speaking of legacy characters, um, we also got another Spider-Man, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, that will swing into theaters on June 2nd. This one continues the story of Miles Morales as he's catapulted across the multiverse. Miles encounters a team of spider people who have been charged with protecting the multiverse. When the heroes clash on how to handle a new threat, Miles will have to redefine what it means to be a hero. Now, we have some characters returning from the previous films, Peter B. Parker and Spider-Gwen. Oscar Isaac will be voicing a character called Miguel O'Hara, who is a Spider-Man from the future. The first movie was so revolutionary and innovative, it became an instant classic. So I'm not sure, my one reservation about this film and my hesitation about it has been, can they at least equal the first one and, and dare I say top it? I don't know. I don't know if that's possible. But from the trailers, the animation looks amazing. This could be one to see on a big screen. All right. Also happening on June 9th, we've got Strays, which is the story of an abandoned dog who teams up with other strays to get revenge on the man who abandoned him. This is a talking dog movie like Babe or Babe Pig in the City, where we see their mouths move. We got voices like Will Farrell, Jamie Foxx, Sofia Vergara, Isla Fisher, and Josh Gad. It looks like a takeoff on movies like 
Homeward Bound, where the dog has to make a journey uh, to get back home. It's a broad comedy where, like, the dogs get drunk and high, and and the revenge part of it entails them uh, biting a man's genitals off. So it's not subtle. It looks like a kid's movie with the talking animals, but the tone is definitely more adult. So I, it kind of leaves me wondering, who, who is this movie for? There's some amazing comedy talent involved, but, you know, this is one of those ones that c- it could be really funny or really bad. It's, it's hard to say. All right, coming up on July 21st, we've got Insidious Fear the Dark. This is the fifth one in the franchise. The original came out in 2010 and was followed by Insidious Chapter 2 in 2013 and Chapter 3 in 2015. And then in 2018, we had Insidious The Last Key, and now we've got Fear the Dark. This latest film in the series follows the Lamberts, picking up 10 years after the last film. Patrick Wilson will direct and star in this one. He also stars in the Conjuring series of films, so the guy's done a lot of horror. Let's see what he can do with his directorial debut. Also opening on July 21st, Barbie is coming into theaters. So this is interesting. This is the first live action incarnation of Barbie. It's directed by Greta Gerwig, who has made some good films. She made Lady Bird and Little Women. Now, according to the IMDb description, to live in Barbie land is to be a perfect being in a perfect place, unless you have a full-on existential crisis or you're a Ken. So we got Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. Now, in the teaser trailer, it's a spoof of the opening of 2001 A Space Odyssey, which kind of gives you a sense of the tone. We see a bit of Barbie land as well. I think this has got a real Lego movie vibe to it, where uh, this toy character living in a perfect world suddenly wonders who she is and, and why she's there. Now, on an earlier news episode, I mentioned that Gerwig has made some good movies, so this could be good as well. But like Strays, I'm kind of wondering who is this for? Now, uh, is it for little girls or is it for women who grew up with Barbie as little girls? So I'm interested in seeing what they can do with the material. <laughs> 